Hey everybody, Mr. Rosser here. We're going to embark on another adventure using the new Wick 2D editor that we've started using. Uh, this will let us create 2D animation as we did last time with the bouncing ball. Um, this time we're going to focus on learning how to import pictures and how to make separate layers. So I want to want you guys to take a look at this animation that I made. Isn't that pretty? Really simple. Um, the butterfly is a photo that I imported and then I created this background, this sky. And so I'm going to show you guys how to do something like this. You can pick whatever picture you want and create whatever kind of background you want. So if you want it to, uh, you know, bring in Batman and have Gotham in the background or, you know, um, have a, a bird flying around, you know, whatever you want to do, you can do something completely different, but the, it, it still works the same. So let me show you how to do this. The first thing we're going to need to do is you're going to need a picture. So the first thing we want to do is we need to find a photo to import into the Wic editor. You can pick whatever photo you want. My recommendation is that you select a PNG. Because let me show you, if I type in PNG, PNG often comes in the style, if I go to images here, um, comes in with this background oftentimes where you can bring in the picture without it just being a boring square box. You know, so like if you see how it has that kind of dotted background, some of them are in a white background, but it'll still work. Um, some of them, though, you'll import and it'll still be in have that box there. Um, it's OK if it does, but you could also experiment till you find one that that comes in just the shape like my butterfly did. So um, for me, I would search because I wanted a butterfly. So I search butterfly PNG. And then you've got all these different butterflies you could choose from. And then once you find one that you like, um, again, it's not a guarantee that it's not going to have a background on it. Um, so you might have to come back and try again until you find one that does, or you could just use the box. But it's more fun if you get one that's the actual shape of the object. So I'm just going to right mouse click, say save as, because I need to get it onto my computer. And I'm going to save it to my photos folder. So um, let me find that here. Here we go, my pictures folder here, and I'll just call it pink butterfly. So there we go. And so the next thing we wanna do is we wanna go to the Wic editor. So in Canvas, you'll find the link to open that. Um, but let me just grab that right here. Here's the Wic editor. I'm inside the Wic editor now. So the first thing we want to do once we're inside the Wic editor is we want to bring our photo in there. So we're going to go to the right side where it says asset library. And if you go, there's the plus button, go one more over and you'll go to the upload assets. And I'm going to click that because that will let me go on my computer and find the file. So I'm going to make sure I'm in my pictures folder. Make sure I find the picture. So there's pink butterfly. I'm going to select that. Notice it popped in. I misspelled pink with two Ks, but that's okay. Um, so now what I could do, you could see it's over here in the right in this folder in this bin over here. So I can just drag and drop that or double click. I'm going to set that onto the background. Let's see. Now see that came up exactly like I said, see how it came up with the whole box. So I could use that or I could find one that works. I'm going to find one that works. So I'm going to undo that. Just undo that till it's gone. I want to delete this one and I'm going to go find a picture that works. So I'm going to grab down here. There's one called butterfly. And there we go. This is the one that I used earlier and see this one works. See how it imported so nicely with the where it's just the butterfly shape it's okay if you just used a, a one that had the background on it it's not looks nicer if you're able to find one that's not in the box format so the first thing we want to do is now we can move this object around so let me show you some basics of this is it works the same way as you did with animating your own drawings. The only difference is you're going to need to copy and paste the picture onto new frames. So let me, I'm going to have my butterfly go right across the screen. Let's just do that. So I'm going to have it like 
um, maybe make it a little smaller and have it fly across. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna downsize the butterfly. So I can grab this corner here and see I could shrink it. Um, if you want to keep the perspective the same, hold the shift button down as you hold the left mouse button down and shrink it. If I don't do that, see I can warp it all out. I can undo that, get it back to normal. But if I hold the shift button down, it will, it will maintain its aspect ratio. So I'm just gonna slide this over here to the right and let me bring it, let's just put it right here just so I can show you real quick how we would do this. So the first thing I'm gonna do, there's my first frame. So I'm gonna add another frame just like you did with your, uh, your when you did the bouncing ball. I'm gonna hit the plus button there. Now you notice it's blank. What I need to do is I need to get this butterfly, a copy of it to paste over on the new frame. Okay, so I'm gonna copy this butterfly so the first thing I need to do, I need to make sure I select my butterfly. So I click on the butterfly, so the box is around it, then I'm gonna copy it. So I'm gonna say copy, and then I'm gonna slide my bar over to my playhead over to the new frame, and I'm gonna say paste. And boom, there's the butterfly. And now I can slide it over a little bit so I can have it flying across the screen. Um, the thing to be aware of is that sometimes, let me show you a common mistake that I've made a hundred times. I'm gonna hit the plus button to add my new frame and I wanna add the butterfly. To make it easier, it depends on, you could copy and paste it each time or the cool thing is you could turn on the onion skin. But a lot of times what'll happen is I'll go to copy it, right? I'm gonna say copy and I'm gonna go paste. Let me turn this onion skin off and nothing happens. Well, why didn't it happen? Why did nothing happen? Because I didn't select the butterfly. See, I need to select my picture. Now I can copy it. Well, it's saying there's nothing to copy because I didn't select it. Copy, there we go. And now I'm gonna paste it. There we go. And I'm gonna hit, turn on the onion skin and slide my butterfly over a little bit more. There we go. And then I'm just gonna keep that process up. There you go. Okay, so I'm gonna stop there and you'll see if I play it back. Pretty, it's flying. And so the next thing to be aware of is you could also, let me show you another thing here, is if I wanted to, I could also increase the size of it. I could decrease the size of it. You know, I could, uh, I could flip it around. So just so you're aware of other things you could do, but I'm just gonna delete that frame. So now, now what I want you to be aware of is that you could also draw on your butterfly or your object if you want it to. See, it will let me draw on it on each frame. So if I wanted to add some, some dynamics to it, I could, you know, on each frame. I'm gonna undo that. But now we wanna add a background. And this is really cool. So what I'm gonna do is we need to add a layer because we want the butterfly to be on the first year layer flying over the background. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down to our timeline and we're gonna select this plus button. So now you'll see it says layer and now I have layer two. Whatever is on the bottom is gonna be of the layer stack here is gonna be the one that's behind. So layer two is behind. So I'm going to select the plus button and I've added a frame and I'm gonna draw some clouds. So let me draw some nice, pretty, fluffy clouds back here. See how it immediately went behind a butterfly? Pretty cool, huh? So here's my nice, fluffy clouds. There you go. So there's some clouds. Okay, so let's color the background. So the first thing we wanna do is let's make a sky. So to make a sky, if I try to just grab the paint bucket and some blue paint, watch this. See, it says the shape you're trying to fill has a gap. It looks for enclosed objects. So I could either grab my paintbrush and paint the whole background, which would take forever. Or like last time we saw, I could go to the gear. I could, uh, first let's give the project a name so I could save it. Butterfly. 
and call it Butterfly 2 because I already have one saved. And then I'm going to get the blue, the baby blue color here. That's a nice sky color. I'm going to say Apply. And you'll notice now I've got the sky. Okay, so the next thing we want to do after we've added our background color is let's color the clouds white. So I'm going to come over here, select the fill color, and I would select white. There's a white right down here. I could just select that. And you can see my fill, fill color is white. And I'm going to select the paint bucket. And since my clouds are completely closed in, I can just fill them. And there we go. I could keep that style if I want, or watch this, since my lines are kind of thick, I could fill in the lines too. There, now I've got some nice fluffy clouds. And now watch, when I hit play, you'll notice the clouds went away. Well, what I need to do on the second layer, if I want my background to stay there the whole time, and this is really cool, watch this, just stretch it out. Now it stays the entire time. Can you see how easy, um, what a great advantage this is on future projects? Because now when you animate, you could create your characters on the first layer and you could have a background that just remains the whole time. A very important side note is make sure while you're working on this that you save as you go. So I cannot emphasize enough, be sure you're saving your project constantly. Just go to the green save button, hit save, and then give it a name and save it to a folder where you could find it. That way, when you come back to Wick Editor, you can continue your project. So there you go, there's my butterfly and I am ready to export this. So I am going to, you could either export it as a GIF, since there's no sound on it, or you could send it as a video. When we start adding sound to things, you're gonna wanna export it as a video. But for now, I'm just gonna say export as GIF. You can see it's gonna export, it's gonna ask me where I wanna put it. I would select a folder where I want it to be. And then I'll put it in videos. And there we go. And now that that's exported, I could go into Canvas and go to the assignment and turn it in. So that's all there is to it. Have fun, pick the picture that you wanna use, create the background you wanna use and have fun with this.